So you've started exercising. Maybe it's running, riding, yoga, or hitting the gym. But what actually happens to our bodies when we start exercising? And if we continue, how long does it take to get fitter, stronger, and faster? Stick around, let's find out. Today, we're gonna to answer this question. What are the acute and chronic responses to exercise? Here's exactly what you'll know by the end of this video. The definition of acute and chronic, the acute responses to exercise, and the chronic responses or adaptations to exercise. Let's get into it. So, first of all, acute simply means instant. So it's the body's immediate response to exercise, going from rest to exercise. Chronic just means over time. So it's the body's adaptation to exercise over time. So here are some of the acute responses to exercise. This is generalized to cover all the main exercise types. So as we start to exercise, our cardiac output, so this is our heart rate and our stroke volume, that goes up. This is because more blood flow is needed to working muscles. A side note here, we have a certain amount of blood in our bodies. Now this can be in usually two states, the fight or flight mode, which is where it goes to the working muscles for things like exercise, or it can go into the rest and digest phase, which is where the blood goes back towards the intestinal system to help digestion. Another acute response is an increase in tidal volume. This is made up of respiratory rate and ventilation. So essentially, we start exercising, our heart beats faster, and our lungs work harder. We also have vasodilation of blood vessels to working muscles. So this is where the blood vessels, such as arteries, actually expand to allow for more blood to get to the working muscles. And finally, we have an increase in body temperature. This also means an increase in sweat rate, as well as the elasticity of muscles and connective tissue. So those are a few of the examples of acute responses to generalized exercise. So what are the chronic responses? Here are just a couple again for generalized exercise. So we have a decrease in resting heart rate. This is because our cardiorespiratory system becomes more efficient over time and our heart doesn't have to work as hard to pump. This is also linked to an increase in maximal heart rate. Because our cardiovascular system is stronger and more efficient, we can actually push it to a higher degree or a maximal heart rate during intensive exercise. Another chronic response is an increase in lean muscle mass, also called hypertrophy. This is more specific to things like strength training. Related, we have a decrease in body fat percentage. This is a common response to basically every type of exercise from aerobic to strength. We have an increase in bone density. We have an increase in red blood cell count. And finally, we have an increase in the fuel storage and utilization within our muscles and cells. Now, logically, different types of exercise will produce different adaptations or different responses in the body. There are four main training types, and within each of these are training methods. So we have aerobic, we have anaerobic, we have strength, and we have flexibility. So each of these has different exercises which produce different chronic responses. For example, aerobic or cardiovascular exercises could include running, riding, or swimming. Anaerobic exercises would include explosive movements such as sprinting or throwing. Strength or resistance exercises would include weightlifting, HIIT, circuit training, Pilates or yoga. And finally, flexibility would include static and proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation or PNF stretching. Each of these would produce different adaptations. So the question here is how do chronic adaptations actually occur? Well, consistency is key. The general recommendation is where it's strength training or aerobic training, do it a minimum of three times a week for a minimum of four to eight weeks. Now this will vary, but our body needs enough stimuli to produce these adaptations, any less and we may not see the results that we're after. We also need to make sure that the training methods we've chosen are effective. So if we're aiming for a decrease in body fat, for example, we're not solely going to focus on flexibility. We might do a bit of strength mixed with a bit of aerobic. This will produce the chronic adaptation we're after. Relatedly, we need to utilize training principles. These include sport and fit within our training program. We need to use specificity. We need to progressively overload the amount of work we're doing. We need to do enough to make sure that we're not actually going backwards and giving ourselves too much rest. And we need to mix it up to keep ourselves motivated and our body adapting. We also need to make sure that the frequency is good, about three times a week. We're training with intensity, we're doing enough time, and we're doing the right type 
or the right training method. Here's an example of what this might look like in reality. This is a beginner's marathon training plan, and you can see it goes for 11 weeks. So we can see we're using progressive overload. We're starting with 3K easy, we're progressing up to 5K easy by week 11. We're also doing different things on different days, utilizing tedium or variety. This program will definitely produce enough stimuli to give us the adaptations that we're after. Two more important factors is rest. A key point here is all chronic adaptations, whether that's building muscle, increasing our cardiovascular efficiency or anything else, they take place during rest, not during exercise. This is a common misconception. Exercise is the stimuli or the thing that occurs and the rest, the recovery, the adaptation occurs after. Finally, this is not possible without proper nutrition, so food provides the building blocks to recover, develop, and produce these adaptations. And the key nutrient here is protein. So here's a quick summary of acute and chronic adaptations to exercise. Acute adaptations happen before, during, or after a bout of exercise. And the responses we've been through in this video allow for the exercise to occur. Chronic adaptations occur over time, whether that's weeks, months, or years. So frequent, effective training is the stimuli for adaptations. Rest and nutrition are key to creating these adaptations. And the magnitude, the size of the adaptations are influenced by the quality and the quantity of training, the training methods utilized, and the effectiveness of the application of the training principles. So there you have it. Thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you learned something. If you still have questions, comment below. If you want to learn more about PE Buddy and everything else that we do, head to www.onlinepebuddy.com. Thanks, guys.